drop it. Hi, good day everyone. I am your teacher Gar, and this time we are going to discuss one dimension classification system. We can classify motor skills by determining which skill characteristics are similar to those of other skills. The most prevalent approach has been to categorize skills according to one common characteristics. Three skill classification system use this approach. For each system, we should know that the common characteristics is divided into two categories, which represents extreme ends and of a continuum rather than dichotomous categories. This continuum approach allows a skill to be classified in terms of which category the skill characteristics is more like, rather than requiring that the characteristics fit one category exclusively. Number one classification is that the size of primary musculature required. One characteristic that distinguishes categories of motor skills is the size of muscle groups required to perform the skills. Skills like walking, hopping, do not require the prime mover's muscles group of the same size as those used for skills like piano playing and eating with chopsticks. By distinguishing skills based on the size of muscle groups required to accomplish the action, researchers have established a motor skill classification system in which there are two categories known as the gross and fine motor skills. To achieve the goals of the gross motor skills, people need to use large musculature to produce the action. So these skills need less movement precision than fine motor skills. We classify skills such as the so-called the fundamental motor skills like walking, jumping, throwing, and etc. as gross motor skills. Ano naman ang fine motor skills? Fine motor skills fall at the other end of this classification continuum. Fine motor skills require greater control of the small muscles, especially those involved in hand-eye coordination and require a high degree of precision in hand and finger movement. Handwriting, typing, drawing, sewing, and Fastening a button are examples of motor skills that are on the fine motor skill end of the continuum in the muscle size classification system. Note that whereas large muscles may be involved in the action of a fine motor skills, the small muscles are the primary muscles involved to achieve the goal of the skill. The use of gross or refined distinction for motor skills is popular in a number of settings. In education setting, special education and adaptive physical education curricula and tests commonly distinguish skills on this basis. We also find this classification system in, of course, the rehabilitation environment. Physical therapies typically work with patients who need to rehabilitate gross motor skills such as walking, whereas occupational therapies more commonly deal with patients who need to learn fine motor skills. People who are involved in early childhood development also find the gross and the fine categorization useful and have developed tests of motor development along gross or fine dimension. Also, in industrial and military aptitude tests, commonly used gross and fine motor skills distinction. Number two classification is the specificity of where actions begin and end. Researchers classifies 
motor skills on the basis of how specific the beginning and the end locations are for an action. If a skill requires beginning and end location, we categorize the skill as a discrete motor skill. Ano, ano nga ba ang discrete motor skill? Discrete motor skills, this includes, for example, the flipping of light switch, depressing the clutch of an automobile, and hitting a piano key. Each of these skills involves a specified place to begin and end the action. Also, note from the example that discrete skills typically are simple, one movement skills. Sometimes, a skill requires a series or sequence of discrete movements, such as the shifting of gears in a standard shift car or playing a song on a piano. So we refer to these types of skill as serial motor skills. The gear shifting example is a good illustration. To shift from second to third gear, the driver performs a sequence of seven discrete movements. First, he or she lifts a foot off the accelerator, then depresses the clutch with the other foot, then moves the gear shift forward to neutral, then to the right, then forward again to the third gear, then releases the clutch, and finally depresses the accelerator. At the opposite end of this classification system, continuum fall continuous motor skills, which are skills with arbitrary beginning and end location. A continuous skills usually contain repetitive movements. We can classify skills such as tracking a motor cursor on a computer monitor, swimming, and walking. Those are examples of continuous skills. Although, some continuous skills such as walking and swimming have distinct beginning locations, the end location is arbitrary and the movements are repetitive. Number three characteristic is the stability of the environment. One classification system has its roots in industrial as well as education and rehabilitation settings. For this classification system, the term environment refers specifically to the object where the person is acting on and to, to the characteristics of the context in which the person performs the skill. For example, if a person is hitting a ball, the critical component of the environment is the ball itself. For the skill of walking, however, the critical environment features are the surface in which the person must walk and the characteristics of the environment context in which the person must walk. According to this classification scheme, if the environment is stable, that is, if it does not change while the person is performing the skill, then we classify the skill as a closed motor skill. For this skill, the object to be acted on does not change during the performance of a skill. So in effect, the object waits to be acted on by the performer. For example, picking up a pen from a table is a closed motor skill because the pen does not move between the time you decide to pick it up until you pick it up. Walking in an uncluttered room is also a closed motor skill because the environment context it does not change while you are walking. Other examples of closed motor skills are shooting an arrow at a stationary target. Another is buttoning a shirt, stair climbing, and hitting a ball off a tee. For each of these skills, 
the performers can initiate action when he or she is ready to do so and perform the skill according to his or her own wishes. Conversely, an open motor skill is a skill that is performed in a non-stoppable environment where the object or the context is in motion during the performance. To perform such a skill successfully, the performer must act according to the action of the object or the changing characteristics of the environment. For example, skills such as driving a car, stepping into a moving escalator, walking on a sidewalk, crowded with people walking, striking a moving tennis ball, and of course, catching a ball are all open motor skills. People perform each of these skills in a temporary and or, or spatially changing environment. For example, during a rally, a tennis player cannot stand in one spot only, right? And decide when he or she move and how he or she will respond to the ball. To be successful, the player must move and act in accordance with the ball's spatial location, location and speed characteristics. Similarly, walking on a crowded sidewalk is an open water skill because the person's walking characteristics vary depending on the movement of the other people. To sum it up, one dimension classification system has three classification systems. Number one, the size of primary musculature required. We have two, gross motor skill and fine motor skills. Gross motor skill, this refers to motor skill that requires the use of large musculature to achieve the goal of the skill. We also have the fine motor skill, which is a motor skill that requires control of small muscles to achieve the goal of the skill. Typically, this involves eye-hand coordination and requires a high degree of precision of hand and finger net. Number two classification is the specificity of where actions begin and end. Under which is the discrete motor skill, serial motor skill, and continuous motor skill. In a discrete motor skill, this is a motor skill which clearly defined beginning and end points. This usually requiring a simple movement. Serial motor skill is a motor skill that involves a series of discrete motor skills. While in a continuous motor skill, this is a motor skill with arbitrary beginning and end points. So these skills usually involve repetitive movements. Number three classification is the stability of the environment. Under stability of the environment, we have two. The closed motor skills and an open motor skill. Closed motor skill is a motor skill performed in a stable or predictable environment where, of course, the performer determines when to begin the action. While in an open motor skill, this is a motor skill that requires or involves a non-stoppable and predictable environment where, of course, an object or environment context is in motion and determines when to begin the action. That ends our video for One Dimension Classification Systems. I hope that you will watch my next video. Thank you and God bless everyone. Drop it.